Did you know that using the wrong batch setting in ComfyUI could be slowing down your workflow by 400%? Let's fix that right now. Welcome back to part four of our ComfyUI mastery series. In part three, we mastered the case sampler. Today, we are unlocking the secret to generating four times faster while keeping your GPU from crashing. Here's what you'll learn. The critical difference between batch size and batch count two visualization tricks to manage multiple outputs like a pro. And last but not least, how to run parallel workflows simultaneously using a feature 90% of users miss. Stick around until the end where I'll reveal how to clone workflows to test multiple samplers and settings at once, a game changer for iterative creation. Let's dive in. Let's start with batch size and batch count. While they might sound similar, they work quite differently. Batch size controls how many images your computer processes at the same time, like baking multiple trays of cookies in the oven at the same time. You'll find this setting in the empty latent image node. Batch size uses more VRAM because all images are generated in parallel. Batch count, on the other hand, is like putting multiple trays in the oven one after another. Batch size uses more VRAM because all images are being generated in parallel, just like how you'd need a bigger oven to bake multiple cookie trays at once. Batch count, on the other hand, is generating one image after another, freeing VRAM after each generation. You complete one cookie tray, set it aside to cool, and start on the next one. You'll find this setting in the top menu bar. Let me demonstrate the difference in speed. I'll start by generating four images with a batch size of four. Watch what happens when I click Generate. And I'll open the queue pane on the side so that we can see execution time. As you can see here, it takes a total of 62.63 seconds. Now watch what happens when I turn the batch size back to one and increase the batch count to four. Look at the queue, you'll notice four different entries. One of them took 16.2 seconds to generate, while the others required negligible time. As a result, the total generation time is 16.2 seconds. You might think that generating images one after another with batch count would be slower than processing them all at once with batch size, but here's what's actually happening. When we try to process multiple images at once using batch size, it's like trying to stuff too many cookie trays in a small oven. Our GPU simply doesn't have enough VRAM to handle it all. When this happens, it's forced to use your computer's regular memory instead, which is much slower, like trying to bake cookies on your stovetop when the oven is full. That's why for most users, especially if you're working with limited VRAM, I'd recommend sticking with batch count. When working with multiple outputs, there are two convenient ways to view your generated images. I've just generated four images using a batch count of one and batch size of four, which took 62.58 seconds. Let me show you two different ways to view these results. The first method is through the Q panel on the left. See this number here? When you click it, it'll take you to a detailed view showing all generated images. To get back to all tasks, just click this arrow at the top. The second method is through the Save Image node itself. Look at the bottom right of the node. You'll see it says 1 out of 4. You can click through each image right here. Want to see all images at once? Just click this X symbol in the top right corner. This closes the detail view and shows you all four images together in a grid layout. Both methods work great. It's really just personal preference which one you use. I personally prefer using the Save Image node when I'm fine-tuning my workflow, as it keeps everything right where I'm working. Organizing your generated images effectively is important for any workflow. Take a look at the Save Image node. At the top, you'll see a field called file name underscore prefix, which by default says ComfyUI. This prefix determines how your images will be named in your output folder. The output folder where all your ComfyUI images are stored can be found in the directory where you installed ComfyUI under a folder called Output. 
Let me demonstrate how to customize this. Instead of using the default comfy UI prefix, you might want to use something more descriptive like robot flower or whatever it is you are generating. This makes it much easier to find specific images later. When you generate multiple images, Comfy UI automatically adds increasing numbers to your chosen prefix. For example, if your prefix is robot flower, your files will be saved as robot flower 1, robot flower 2, and so on. One of the most powerful features in Comfy UI is the ability to experiment with multiple workflows simultaneously using group nodes. First, let me demonstrate how to create a group node. Select multiple nodes by holding Command on Mac or Control on Windows while clicking on them. Now, right-click and select Convert to Group Node. Give your group a name and watch how Comfy UI combines everything into one consolidated node. See how the resulting image appears at the bottom when we execute this workflow? If you're not happy with your group node's layout, no problem. Right-click and select Manage Group Node. This opens a view where you can rearrange everything to your liking. You can also control which inputs and outputs are visible on the group node interface. If you want to go back to seeing all individual nodes, simply right-click the group node and select Convert to Nodes. This expands everything back to the detailed view you're familiar with. Let me show you a practical example of how I use this. I like to create a group node called Prompt that combines both positive and negative prompts. This keeps related settings neatly organized in one place. But remember, you have complete freedom in how you organize your nodes. It's all about what works best for your workflow. Now, you might wonder why I'm showing you this group node feature in our batch processing tutorial. Well, there's a powerful reason. Group nodes make it incredibly easy to clone and run multiple workflows simultaneously. First, let me demonstrate how to create a clone of your workflow. Select all nodes by clicking the control button, right click and choose Convert to Group Node. Give it a meaningful name. Now here's the cool part. Right click on your new group node and select Clone. Watch how Comfy UI instantly duplicates your entire workflow. This cloning feature opens up several exciting possibilities. You can test different prompt variations side by side compare different case sampler settings, or run multiple experiments simultaneously, all without rebuilding your workflow from scratch. Let's try this out. I'll set different file name prefixes for each workflow so we can easily identify our outputs later. For my second workflow, I'll switch to the UniPC sampler. Now watch what happens when I press Q. See how both workflows execute sequentially? Each one generates its own image, letting us compare the results of the same prompt with different samplers. This is an efficient way to experiment with different settings without rebuilding your workflow from scratch. Now, what if you want to temporarily disable one workflow without deleting it? Let me show you a handy feature called Bypass. Right-click on any node, it doesn't have to be a group node, and select Bypass. Watch what happens when I queue the next execution. The bypassed workflow is completely ignored. See? Only the active workflow generates an image. To reactivate a bypassed node, simply right-click and toggle Bypass again. It will now be included in the next generation. This wraps up our exploration of text-to-image workflows. In part 5 of our series, we'll dive into image-to-image -image generation, where I'll show you even more exciting possibilities with Comfy UI. Before you go, two resources to supercharge your workflow. If you're still working on creating the perfect prompts, check out my Stable Diffusion prompt guide, while I made it using the web UI from Automatic 1111. The same principles apply perfectly to Comfy UI. Want to try these settings yourself but don't have a powerful GPU? I've created a ready-to-use Comfy UI template on Lightning AI, giving you up to 22 hours of free GPU usage every month. 
there's no installation required. Simply click the link in the description. Sign up for a free Lightning.ai account, no credit card needed, and start using my starter kit template to generate AI art directly in your browser. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you'll join me soon in my next video.